Well, welcome everybody. I'm going to call the meeting to order. It's 10 o'clock. Today is Thursday, September 17th, 2020, and it is our 44th annual Founders Day. Woo! Welcome to the Santa Rosa Quilt Guild's first Zoom meeting. I am Janelle Voorhees, your president, in case you didn't know, and I will be your captain today. See, I've got my captain's badge on and everything. Oh, you can't see it. Um, if this had been a typical face-to-face -face meeting at the Veterans Memorial Building in Santa Rosa, we would be celebrating Founders Day with a wonderful potluck luncheon. Unfortunately, we will need to celebrate after this meeting with, you will have to celebrate with your own potluck homemade lunch or Carol Lemoyne style. I'm going to call on our hospitality chair to help sort this out as only she can do. Go, Carol! Um, I'm Carol Lemonnier, your hospitality, and I want to welcome you to the Founders Day Luncheon. You may wonder why hospitality uh, is um, having a little committee meeting, because obviously I'm not there with you in your home. But I feel that we need to encourage hospitality. And uh, I just wanted to say that um, during this shutdown, they uh, have closed our stores, our fabric stores even, and they have closed our churches and a lot of our meetings, even our guild meetings. And they've even canceled in Healdsburg the blue skies. I don't even know what blue is except for the fabric that I have in my stash. But what they have not taken away from us are our memories, our lovely memories of our Founders Day luncheon. Remember Ruby anniversary where we all wore red? You guys were so good and cooperative and you all wore a wonderful red dress. Remember when we um, auctioned off Dottie's aprons and we um, had little uh, um, uh, table runners and things like that that were little aprons. And then Vicki last year, I think, did the balloons. We've had great times with the Founders Day luncheon. So they can take away a lot of it, but they cannot take away our memories. And I also want to invite you for this Founders Day luncheon and remind you what we did at Founders Day luncheon. And so I'm going to switch the camera and remind you what it is that we did. Because as you watch this meeting on Zoom, don't forget, you've got to have two plates, right? So here we go. And on the first plate, you have to have at least three different types of lasagna, two different kinds of chicken. You've got to have some sushi, and maybe Elaine will bring that dip, cheese, everything. Fill that plate and eat it. Oh, and don't forget the desserts. Yes, as big of a plate of desserts with cake, pie, strawberries, chocolates, no one will know. You will be home, but you will be enjoying what we did. And you know, because you're at home, why, you can even have, yes, no one will know. Ha <laughs> ha, sometimes the pandemic is just as much fun. And so, welcome to 2020's Founders Day Luncheon. Enjoy yourself, and I miss you all. Um, and it seems appro appropriate to have our Zoom meeting on our Founders Day, because look at all the changes since our guild was born 44 years ago at our first meeting in September 2076. <laughs> 2076, did you catch that? 1976. Here's a photo of our first meeting showing our founding members. Okay, I'm going to try sharing that, but if we've got a problem with Zoom, it may not let me share anything. So let's try that and see what happens. I'm going to go to my main screen here and see if it works. 
Oh, there we go. Working this time. Okay. Okay. So in the back row, back row, left to right, is Betty Shannon. She was the librarian chair. That's food and drinks. Wynne Riddell was the activities director. And the gal in the red shirt next to her was Susie Bertolini, secretary treasurer. And Madeline Cahill was the first president. In the front row, I think you'll all recognize, or many of you will recognize, Dottie Zager. She's the first one on the left in the front row. She was historian and parliamentarian. Then there's um, Bobby Sandariva, who's a librarian, and Joyce Sharp, who is a membership chairman. And they called them chairman at the time. Now we call them chair people or chair, just chairs. We have many past presidents with us on Zoom today. Thank you for all your work and paving the way for our wonderful guild to prosper and expand to 286 members. Let's go to safety. Safety first. Let's begin with a few safety tips and housekeeping items. Am I still on the screen where it shows everybody? You'll want to go on uh, speaker view for it to see you spotlighted. If people are on gallery, then they'll see everybody. Okay, so I have to do that? No, you are spotlit and I see big, big view. Okay, because I can see a lot of people and I'm you know, an inch big. Number one, you don't need to wear your mask for this meeting if you're viewing it by yourself. Number two, look around for your nearest exit. Number three, locate your restroom. It should be off the hall highway either to your left or to your right and hope you didn't forget to bring this. Just kidding, but I hope you remembered. Make sure your beverage is in a tight fitting container. I'll show you a few examples. No spills allowed. Number five, during our flight, we will mute all of you, all of our passengers, so the background noise will be kept to a minimum. If we call upon you to speak, we will unmute you and your picture will appear on everyone's screens. And that means everyone's screen. And everyone will be able to see you. Please make certain your camera is appropriately situated so your face will appear. And your attire is appropriate. We ask that you don't fold your laundry with your Lux Lovelies or wear your see-through pajamas. Thank you. We'll teach you more about this in a few minutes. We anticipate this flight to take approximately 45 minutes, so sit back. Fasten your seat belts and tighten up. It's going to be a fun ride. If you have any questions at the end of the meeting, please send them to me and I'll um, respond later, much later. Anyway, being cooped up for this many months has been difficult at best, and we hope that having guild meetings on Zoom will brighten your day. I miss you all, and I'm sending you all virtual hugs. Now for some good news. Ann Nolan has volunteered to be our new committee chair for Zoom, and she will handle Zoom training and all Zoom-related activities, plus behind-the-scenes production, helping me run this meeting smoothly. Ann's team includes Justine Lott, Elaine Tucker, and who else do we have? <laughs> well, I've got Linda Hooper down here, too, and Linda Hooper. Linda Hooper will continue as website chair website chair and videographer. She will post our Zoom general meetings, Zoom chat questions and answers, videotape TSWs, in addition to show and tell, block of the month and other website functions and supporting Anne and her team. Thank you, all of you. Well, thank you, Linda Hooper and Ann Nolan for working together and providing us with Zoom training and our Zoom meetings. And each meeting will be recorded and placed on our Santa Rosa Guild website with the exception of speaker meetings, unless we get permission from our guest speaker. 
Looking back to 1976, when our guild was created, there were no cell phones, except maybe James Bond, no internet, no personal computers, laptops, and so forth. In order to track and record guild activities, scrapbooks were compiled, lots of them. I want to thank Kathy Rapp and Karen Mansur, who volunteered to store and research the many boxes of scrapbooks that, we cre that were created to capture the guild's activities prior to the internet process that we have today. Look at all the changes in technology that took place in the last 44 years. Kathy, please tell us more. We're gonna try to run her video. I can see Anne is working on it. Hi friends at Santa Rosa Quilt Guild. This is Kathy Rapp, and I'm here to talk to you today about the Guild scrapbooks. Scrapbooks from the days before the time we had digital photography and a blog. Remember when we were moving out of the Masonic Lodge about a year ago? Karen Mansur and I were helping Sharon empty out the library and pack up things when we came across a slew of quilt scrapbooks from our guild. They're beautifully put together. And Karen and I volunteered to digitize the group. Uh, and this from the charter when we started in 1976, I think, yes, yeah, 1976, and then it um, goes to 1998, so 20 years worth of books. We boxed up the scrapbooks and um, lucky me, I got to put them in my garage, all 10 boxes of them. So they've been there for almost a year. So meanwhile, well, a year ago, I contacted Shutterbug and to see if they would scan them for us. And they said, oh great, we can do that, no problem. This is how many we have, I said, and they said it would be $2,000. And I gulped and that was the end of that idea. Um, then I kind of estimated how long it would take to to scan them if, say, I did it on my home scanner printer, which is very slow, but it's nice to have at home. Um, and I figured it would take about 200 hours, and I thought, I'm not up for that. One of our other members was going to give it a try, but then she realized that it was going to knock out her scanner because it was just a home scanner. It wasn't up to the task. So that was kind of the end of the digiting, digitizing idea. And then after a while, I thought up, well, gee, if you go to like UPS or back in the day FedEx when they were open for scanning or Office Max or um, Office World or Staples, you could do it on a big professional machine, you know, a big copier, um, like an office copier from an office. Um, and that was, it might take about 100 hours of standing there in front of the machine. And I thought, I'm not up for that either. But if you are, let me know, because I'll gladly send you the, the scrapbooks and you can digitize them. I think that would be a great idea because those scanning, um, the costs are so small per um, page, something like five cents or something. So meanwhile, along comes the pandemic and it's been about a year. And so I'm looking at these uh, scrapbooks and thinking, oh my goodness, it could be another year. I hate to say it until we're all together again. Because Karen really thought, and I did too, that it would be great to take these and put them out on a table and you could look through the pictures and see the people back in the day and you could see their show and tell and how quilts have changed over time. But I don't want to wait another year to be able to do that with you. So, We've made some decisions. The board has been involved absolutely um, in all of this. And so the decision was that the first scrapbook or two will be archived in the Guild Library. And Sharon will have them and I assume they'll be available for checkout. You can see, well, if you haven't already, because it will be shown in this meeting, will be the first picture of the Guild. Um, and uh, so, but it's fun to see people back in the day. Um, and um, so what we decided was we'd do a lend, lending program uh, until Halloween. Um, you can, um, we've got a list of the books and they're in boxes and it's, you'll get a copy of that list after this meeting, it'll be sent out to everyone. And if there's a certain year or group that you'd like to see, I'd be glad to send you or 
hand off to you with six feet of distance, um, a box or two so that you can take a look at them and see what was going on at a particular time. <clears throat> so we do, um, the do have the timeline, as I mentioned. It's Halloween that we want to be tied, get this tied up and done. But if you're interested in looking at the books, remember that the first book will be in the library and you can take it out. Um, if you would like to see the notebooks of the, um, the scrapbooks of the Guild for those 20 years, just contact me and we can arrange a pass around. I'll, I'll get them to you. It's Kathy Rapp and my email, well, all my stuff is in the roster, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, you can find my email, which is the number two, Kathy with a C, Rapp, R-A-P-P, at Comcast.net, or you can call me at home at 707-537-9281. I hope to see you all again soon. And this might be a nice diversion during our stay at home time. Take care everybody, see you soon. Hi friends, it's- Thank you, Kathy and Karen for all the work you've done on this project. Um, they've been spending a lot of time going through all of the books. To help keep you inspired, one of our board members, Heidi Mitterai, is collecting information on how to find free quilting videos and other quilting related information. Linda Hooper will post this information on our website when it's ready. So if you have websites you like to visit and they're um, to view your favorite quilted videos, please send them to Heidi Mitterai. Her contact information is on the membership roster. Now I have a question for you. How many of you feel conscious and want to look better on Zoom? We have a two minute video on how to look your best on Zoom. Sit back and enjoy this video. Let's see what advice Ann Nolan has to share. Take it away, Ann. Hi, my name's Ann Nolan, and I wanted to share very quickly some simple tips that'll help you look good when you're on your Zoom call. Now, the first time I turned mine on, it scared me, so I wasn't at a favorable angle, and I didn't look good, so I'd like to share what I have learned. One is that light is your friend. The more light you have hitting your face, it fills in your wrinkles, and you look a little younger. I like that. So remember the light needs to be hitting your face. The easiest way to do that is to set up your computer or tablet or phone where you are facing a window uh, with indirect light. It gives you great light. That's what I'm doing right now. And it doesn't cost a thing. Uh, if you don't have that, you can put a soft light, same thing, facing your face. Uh, a lamp with a shade on it will give you soft light. Um, so that's the tip on the light. And you can, with your laptop or your tablet or your phone, you can put it on your camera and have it uh, aimed at you and go around the house and find your best spot. Uh, my recommendation is make sure you can sit down there because standing will <laughs> wear us out pretty fast. So the next tip, which is really important, is that you get your face centered in the uh, camera. So I often see people show up, I'm gonna demonstrate here, and this is what you see. And obviously we'd like to see you, we've missed you. And so it would be really nice if you're up where we can see you. Um, simple things, like I said, uh, and that will usually give you your best appearance. Now there's techie things you can do. You can buy lights to have there. It's not necessary. Um, you can raise your computer up to the height you want using a stack of books or a box. Once again, it doesn't have to be fancy and it doesn't have to cost anything. So uh, also if you're techie, you can go into your Zoom account and they have in the general settings or meeting settings, depending on your computer, where you can adjust your appearance. 
but all it does is basically the things we've just said. It softens the focus and it may adjust the light. So uh, make it easy on yourself and head for a window and make sure you've got it centered on you so we can see you. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, we now have a Zoom committee. You can let us know and we'll help you out. Bye-bye. Thank you, Ann. Thank you, Ann. That was really helpful. I was glad I um, got to watch that before doing this meeting. So I set up a little alt light and I'm in, right in my back window. Didn't help much, but you know what? Every little bit helps. So let's get down to business. Number one, let's hear from programs and workshops from Ann Nolan. So Ann, you're up again. Let's hear programs and workshops. Hi, it's Ann Nolan talking to you about programs. Um, I'm excited to let you know we're going to start having some programs this year. But we're going to have to do them by Zoom. So at our October meeting, which is um, October 15th, we're going to have our first presenter. It's going to be Julia McLeod from Silk and Salvage. And she's going to give a presentation called Where is the Cotton? She's going to talk about using other materials such as silk and wool and so forth. Uh, for quilting and give us examples. Uh, if any of you belong to Moonlight Quilt Guild, she was the presenter for them in September. This will be a different lecture. We're not overlapping. And then in November, on the 19th, we're going to have a meeting speaker. It's going to be Carol Ziogas. And uh, she's someone with a very interesting job. She travels to uh, Japan and she buys fabric and imports it here. And she sells it out of her home studio in Alameda. So uh, some of you may have discovered her. She usually has a booth at PIQF and I have plenty of cat fabric in my stash that's from her booth. And then she will also be our first workshop the next day on November 20th, which is a Friday. We're gonna have a class and she's gonna be teaching Japanese oro stitching. Uh, which is very popular in the fashion world right now, but it's basically doing straight lines of stitching to add texture to your quilts. So she's going to be teaching that, and I'll be taking signups by phone or email since we're not meeting in person. But I'll send a follow-up email to everyone to give you instructions on signing up if you'd like to take that class. Uh, for those of you who signed up for Linda Ballard in October, she's not ready to do Zoom. So she has been moved to a date in 2021. We're still going to have her come. And I will be working on refunding the payments that people made for that class. And we'll move forward from there. Um, Bonnie asked me to share some of the teachers for next year. She's booked it all full. And we're going to have a few teachers like Sandra Mullen, Lisa Thorpe, Jenny Lyon, Ellie Wiley, uh, Yvonne Nietzsche, I hope I said that right, Lynn Wilder, April Sproul, and, uh, and of course we'll have Linda Ballard. So more information to come next month and looking forward to um, having some new teachers that will be either in person or in Zoom depending on what the rules are at that time. Thanks so much. Bye. Thank you, Ann. Thank you, Ann. That was very informative. We have a community quilt report. Let's hear it from Pam Beebe, Laura Barrett, Janet Tonkin, and Nancy Stedman. Good morning. I'm Laura Barrett, and this is uh, Janet Tonkin, Nancy Stedman, and Pam Beebe, and we're all with Community Quilts. So it's good to be on the Zoom today and seeing everybody and being able to make our announcement. So we have a fun idea scheduled for next month. So Thursday, October 1st, 
is our last quiltathon of 2020. And as we cannot meet in person, we decided to plan a virtual quiltathon. So you're probably wondering, what is a virtual quiltathon? So here's what it's going to look like. Any member who wants to participate will do traditional quiltathon activities in their home. They'll get a photo of themselves doing this activity. Then they'll send the photo to Linda Hooper and she'll organize it in a slideshow, set it to music, and then we'll play it on October 1st Zoom meeting as our virtual quiltathon. I will be sending out an email that explains all the details, the contacts, everything you need after this Zoom meeting today. So don't worry, don't try to remember everything, just sit back, listen, and enjoy it. One thing we ask you is to read the entire email all the way to the end before you call us or email us with questions. Here are some details that will explain the virtual quiltathon. What are the traditional quiltathon activities and will community quilts have fabric supplies, etc., available? Traditional quiltathon activities include sewing tops from kits or your own stash, using the envelope method before quilting the quilt, or quilting in the traditional manner and adding binding or turning the back to the front to make the binding, sewing labels on finished quilts and delivering finished quilts to community quilts. Community quilts will have available kits to make tops, layered quilts that need quilting, and finished quilts that need labels. How do I get a photo of myself and what is the deadline to turn in the photo? First of all, the photo needs to be of you doing a quilting activity. It is not a photo of you holding a finished quilt. Those photos go to show and tell. You can take a selfie or ask a family member or friend to take your photo. Please take the photo using larger frame. The deadline to submit your photo to Linda Hooper is Thursday, September 24th, in order to be a part of the virtual Quiltathon slideshow. show. Send your photo via email to Linda Hooper and put Quiltathon in the subject line. In order to make use of what community quilts will have available, please contact one of the following people and arrange a time for you to pick up. Pam Beebe, Santa Rosa, Kits and Layered Quilts, NICU and Larger. Nancy Stedman, Sebastopol, <laughs> Kits and Layered Quilts, NICU Only. Laura Barrett, Santa Rosa, Layered Quilts, NICU and Larger, and Finished Quilts to Label. And Janet Tonk Tonkin, Oakmont, <laughs> layered quilts, NICU and larger, and finished quilts to label. Wow, that was a lot of information. So again, we're gonna follow up the announcement with an email with all the details, contacts, everything we said, and even a little bit more. So again, please read the entire email from start to finish before you call us or email us with questions. Now, how will you deliver your finished quilts? We have six locations where you can drop off finished quilts, and they are at Pam Beebe's house in Santa Rosa, at my house, Laura Barrett, Santa Rosa, Nancy Stedman in Sebastopol, Janet Tonkin in Oakmont, Margot Pitter in Healdsburg, and Heidi Mitterai in Sonoma. And last, but certainly not least, if we were able to meet in person, the hospitality group would be serving us ice cream to thank us for our dedication in making quilts for our community. So please have some ice cream when you do your own virtual quiltathon at home. And as you savor that ice cream, think about all your fellow quilters <laughs> and all the recipients of the quilts. Thanks. 
Um, I want to add a little bit. We've had a few questions about quilts coming in this past year. I want to thank you all for um, responding with many quilts when I discovered I was down to about 40 NICUs, but now we have quite a lot. Um, we also have reached some Valley of the Moon. Since we last met, I delivered 100 Valley of the Moon quilts back in April, along with a number of masks that they requested. Pam has delivered them to the NICU, et cetera. I've taken them to Memorial. Um, public Health has still wanted some. They aren't using as many, but they are still taking some NICU size. And the emancipated youth have also received a number of quilts from us. Right now, our biggest need is to fill up the um, Valley of the Moon quilts for next year. Those are lap size in the range of 40 to 60. They can be a little smaller because some of the kids are little. Um, but these can also be more adult type ones. And I'll be contacting some of the other places in town to see if they have a need this year. And if you need batting or backing um, for your community quilt, you can contact Laura or me, Janet. Or so me. we, or Pam. Or Pam. <laughs> we have um, flannel and batting and some large backings. So thank you all very much for supporting us. Yeah. Video and the team, very nice video. And did you see that beautiful quilt that was in the background? Oh my gosh, that was incredible. And I think I saw Laura get a little teary eyed. I think she misses all of us. So I'm hoping that for your listening pleasure, we get to see Carol Lemoyne tell us about our block of the months. So tighten your seatbelt and let's hope that it works this time. Hi, Carol again. Um, Here we go. I and Joe, Joni Billinghausen are the block of the month for this year. It's been really easy because we haven't done anything at all. But we have been making blocks and we have been putting them on the website. And the board has informed me that at some point, I'm not exactly sure, but probably near the end of the year, uh, you will be instructed with all of the blocks of the months that you have made to mail them to my address here in Healdsburg. I will then collect them all and then have a drawing that we will record and then I will mail the winners their blocks. So uh, keep working on those block of the months by golly. And I'm going to remind you a little bit of what we have made. Now, nobody knows this. You can make a march if you want which was the Irish thingamajiggies. Or you can make April's tulips. Or you can make this weird thing, which was the April block, I believe. It's four blocks and it's kind of empty in the middle, but that's perfect to put in your perfect quilting or your applique if you want to. We've got butterflies here. We've got the 4th of July pinwheels. We've got April's basket or somebody, one of the month's baskets. September was the can. The can some uh, tomatoes. And so continue working on your block of the months. When you are told to mail them, mail them to me. And then maybe you will be a winner. Until then, keep on working. And do you guys want to know what October is? Let me just give you a quick hint to inspire you. Keep your eyes open. Ta-da! All right. See you then. Bye-bye. As only Carol can do. That was fabulous. Thank you, Carol. Oh, let's see. Is anyone ready for a mystery quilt with Joni Bellinghausen? This was one of the most requested items on the phone calling surveys. Take it away, Joni. Hi, Santa Rosa Quilt Guild. I am so excited to announce that we are going to have a mystery quilt. The project is gonna be a lot of fun and I will be sending 
the supply list to Sharon and it will be sent out October 1st and on October 15th I will be sending out the cutting instructions to Sharon and we will be putting this whole wonderful quilt together on October 29th. And I am really excited to uh, host this and hope that everybody enjoys it. Thank you. Thank you, Joanie. It was nice to hear from you. Betty Upchurch will give, give us an update on our boutique. Take it away, Betty. Hi everyone. I hope everybody is okay and feeling well and enjoying all of its lovely hot weather. Today has been gorgeous though. Um, just for my boutique report, basically I just want to say that I have all of the threads available and I actually have sold quite a few. People have come to the house and, and uh, I just let them go through and pick out what they want. And I have recently made place another order so I have a little bit more. If you're wanting black or white, we're just totally out of luck because that is not to be had right now. Uh, I have the stencils. Those have been, people have come to the house and borrowed it and I, all I do is get it out. They spread it out on a big table and pick out what they want and when they get through they bring them back. So uh, I just, basically that was what I wanted to let everybody know that it is available to you. All you have to do is place a phone call and uh or tell me what you want and i either get it to you or you can come to my house and get it so um like i said i hope everybody is doing well and let's see if we uh how this meeting goes thursday hope it all goes well thank you betty that was very nice it's nice to know that we can still get things from the boutique TSWs, we do have a technique sharing workshop for you. It's um, prepared by Barbara Cordelou on making placemats for donation or for gifts. So here goes our technique sharing workshop. Hi, this is Ann Nolan from Virtual Quilters, and I'm here today with Barbara Cordelou. She uh, runs the program for her quilt guild, uh, making placemats to give on to Meals on Wheels. And I thought she might be the perfect person to show us the best ways to make some um, placemats, either to give to people as gifts or to donate to a cause that can use them. And here is Barbara. Hi. Um... We're here today to show you how to make simple quilt, or face mats, as Anne just mentioned. Anyway, we encourage you to make your place mats approximately 12 by 18. That's for our, our purposes. You can make them any size you want for your own purposes, but for the place mats for the Meals on Wheels, it works best if they're small enough to fit on a TV tray. So that a 12 by 18 is a good general size. It leaves room for the plate and the service on the sides. And the way we start this, this is this particular one is done with a 12 and a half inch square as we have right here. Then we have added three and a half inches to either side in a contrasting fabric. It's kind of fun. These squares were donated by a friend and um, it was hard, it was the challenge was how will I finish it up? But I had lots of boutique uh, scraps as I think a lot of us do. And I was able to kind of generally pair them up pretty well. I think these worked out well. I've got a couple examples here. And um, then once you have sewn these two together, that gives you the top, which is approximately 12 and a half by 18 and a half. And to that, you want to add a piece of batting, 12 and a half by 18. 
you have your top, and then a backing, which is again, 12 and a half by 18. And the way you want to make your sandwich is to put your backing face up, facing you. Then you're going to put your top face down on top of the batting, on top of the backing. <laughs> and then you put your batting on top of that. I pin it in the four corners, and then I leave about a four to six inch gap here for turning purposes, whatever it takes for you to be able to turn one. And then what you're going to do is sew all the way around the edges, <clears throat> leaving your gap here. And because of these piecing of the top part, they're sewn together in fairly small pieces. So I have done a stay stitch, the width of the seam, just, just along there. And I've pulled this back just so you can see that. Basically, it would just all be like that. So anyhow, um, you clip your corners, all four corners, and then like, like so, and then you, I've started turning this for the, for time. And um, I have a stick that I can put down to, to get good corners. But I find a lot of times just working, putting your finger up into the corner and then kind of scrunching it around and that makes a fairly nice corner. Again. This one's already been pre-turned, so it's a little bit easier. And then kind of scrunch it, pull it together. And then this is where that little stay stitch comes in handy. I found before I was just kind of guessing at folding it under this way, I know it's exactly seam width. And then you put that on your ironing board and press it. And it just stinks pretty well. Then what you're going to do after you've decided that uh, it's even and clean, you're going to do a stay stitch all around the edge of the placemat, um, using probably like an eighth of an inch all the way around. If you don't do it close to the edge, then this seam here doesn't get caught. So once you have this, you're ready to quilt. And um, these here, I'm not a free motion quilter. So um, I have done all of this with a walking foot. And I did have some, a template, kind of a rope on the ends. And I was able to do this using my walking foot. And I thought it turned out kind of nice, actually. I was proud of it. This one here, it's exactly done exactly the same way these two are. But anyhow, this, I, these are some of the other squares, just to give you an idea of the colors and how pretty the batiks can be. They're not all perfect, but they, they blend nicely. And I'm ready to do some practice on free motion quilting. I had um, some of the girls from my guild took some of the quilts home, some of the placemats that had been done, and they practice their free motion quilting. And this one here I thought turned out really well. It was done with um, ruler quilting, from what I understand. She did several of those. And also, I had some other examples. This one is basically the same, same pattern that we we're working with on the squares. And it's just a square piece of fabric, an interesting fabric. And I've added contrast to the sides and we proceeded to make it exactly the same way as we did the squares. And these are some more of them, just using different fabrics. This one here, we just added a little highlight in the center. And just in the last few weeks, um, somebody had turned in some placemats for donation. And I thought these were really cute. They were 12 and a half inch squares. And instead of going on the sides of her square, she just added an interesting fabric to the side, one side. And she um, ran this one horizontal, this one vertical. This one, she did a little bit of both. And I thought it was very, very clever. 
anyway, as you can see, there's all kinds of possibilities um, using this simple pattern. Also, um, just so that for, we're giving you some inspiration here, interesting fabric. This one I thought was kind of fun. A cafe, street scene, just add some nice green on the sides or gold, whatever. And it would make a, a nice, I think we did those last year. This is a panel, and I thought four of these would be really cute, and you could put all kinds of interesting fabrics trimming around to make a 12 by 18 placemat. Here's another square that was turned in. Last year, somebody had turned in some paper piece jack-o'-lanterns that she had done, gotten, I think it was in a block of the month possibly and she didn't know what to do with them to put them together in a whole quilt so she actually had some that she added contrasting fabrics and made some really effective placemats this is another one with just interesting fabrics and i think we actually use something like this to go along the sides there was a donation pile of fabric and it uh, looked like it was printed at, I um, can't think of the name of the company that does the printing of fabric. Spoonflower. Spoonflower, that's right. And just by adding some interesting fabrics around the edges, you could build a really nice quilt, I think. She had several different patterns. Then this one here, somebody donated. And I thought these um, roosters could actually be cut out and then just add around to the edges of those. I thought they'd be really pretty. So anyhow, this concludes our program for simple placemats. I hope this will inspire you to get out and do some sewing during this sheltering in place time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Barbara. That was really nice. Okay. We're almost done, but we have a nice surprise for those of you who stay till the end. So don't touch your seatbelt yet. We have not landed. Don't forget to go to the website, srqg.org, to see our calendar, view show and tell, our blog, TSW, Sew Rose, Box of the Month, and more. And if you talk to someone who missed the meeting, just tell them it will be posted in, on our website, and Sharon Fry will send out the announcement when it's available. A big shout out to Sharon Fry for sending us all those emails to keep us connected. We are friendship strong, yes. Here's some upcoming Zoom meeting dates. October 1st is our virtual quiltathon with Community Quilts. October 15th is our guest speaker meeting with Silk and Salvage. October 16th, we're going to have a, a studio tours on parade. We thought that'd be fun to invite people to invite us into their homes and do a little studio parade. October 29th is the virtual mystery quilt with Joni Bellinghausen. But it's been wonderful being connected with all of you today. And there are 90 people on. So we're going to up our membership because hopefully we'll get more next time. But I, I said, I think we'll probably get maybe 30 to 40 this first time. But seven, you know, 90 is just amazing. So I'll see you in our meeting October 1st at 10 a.m. If you would like to stay and visit with the fellow guild members after the meeting, do not log out. Anne is setting up some breakout rooms where you can chat in small groups for up to 20 minutes with some of our guild members. Once you are in the breakout rooms, if you need to leave, you can leave whenever you want by clicking end or leave button. You may have to move your cursor around a little bit to find that button, but it's, it'll either say leave meeting or, uh, or just leave. Thank you, Ann Nolan, Linda Hooper, Elaine Tucker, and Justine Lott for helping put all this together. We couldn't have done it without them. And I hope you enjoyed your trip today. You can unbuckle your seatbelt and meeting adjourned. <laughs>